Hello all our little legends and welcome to another of our little legend story times and today's story is taken from our book of tales of wisdom and wonder and it's called The Peddler of Swayfam retold by Hugh Lockton so it's called The Peddler of Swayfam so a peddler Gerton boys is like somebody that goes around and sells different things that people may need so he go, he doesn't sell it in a shop he goes round from house to house and he'll sell things like, um, can you call it to me move what do you think that is there? Scissors, yeah, so he can sell scissors, he can sell nails, uh-huh, and what's this here maybe? A spool of thread, that's right, and then what's this here, Gerson boys? Well done, it's a sheet of music, that's right, uh-huh. So it's a sheet of music, so he sells a lot of things. So we're going to find out now what happens to the peddler of Swayfam. Once upon a time, there lived a man called John Chapman. He was a peddler by trade, and he tramped the streets, lanes and roads. He tramped the highways and the byways of England, selling pins and mirrors, ribbons and reels of thread, knives and scissors, pills and ointments and ballad sheets and wherever he went he would take his little dog with him running at his heels. Now John Chapman and his dog lived in a little cottage on the edge of the town of Swayfam. A tiny cottage it was and half open to the weather. In the spring the birds would be in and out of the broken windows nesting in the rafters above his bed. But he did have one little bit of luck. There was a tiny garden at the back of the cottage, and in that garden there was an apple tree. A beautiful old russet apple tree, and every autumn it would drop its fruit onto the grass. The sweetest apples in Swayfam. Well, one night John Chapman was fast asleep in his bed when he heard a voice. He heard a lovely voice, as clear as moonlight, in amongst his dreams. Go to London Bridge, it said. Go to London Bridge. He woke up with a start, sat up, rubbed his eyes, looked about himself. But the room was empty and dark. The only sound was the snoring of his little dog at the foot of the bed. Nothing but a dream, he thought to himself. Nothing more than a dream. And he rolled over and went back to sleep. But the next night the voice was back, clear as moonlight in amongst his dreams. Go to London Bridge. Go to London Bridge. He woke up. The room was dark. Nothing but a dream. And he fell back to sleep. So there is John Chapman and he's lying down in his little straw bed and there's his little dog lying beside him and the little light and this is his house and the little birds looking down at the window and what did it say was wrong with the window gears and boys? What was wrong? That's right, it was broken, it didn't have any glass in it and the birds kept coming in and out flying in and out and him lying in his bed. But night after night the voice was back. Go to London Bridge. And John Chapman started thinking to himself. Dreams are strange things and sometimes it's worth listening to them. Maybe I should listen to this one. What would you have done, Kirsten boys? What would you have done? Would you have listened to the, the dream and maybe thought, go there and see what happens. Is that what you might have done? Yeah? Will we see what John does? Will we see what happens? Well John Chapman thought about it and he thought about it and in the end he said to himself, yes I've listened and I've heard and I will go to London Bridge. So he rolled his blanket into a bundle. He packed himself some bread and cheese he whistled to his dog and he set off. 
For two days he tramped and trudged along the highways and the byways, the roads, the lanes and the streets, until at last he came to London Bridge, stretching over the River Thames. In those days the bridge was all covered with shops, and there were people walking and people on horseback. There were carriages and carts moving this way and that way over it. He'd never seen such a hustle and bustle in his life. What was he going to do? What do you think he'll do, girls and boys? Do you think that maybe he'll go into one of the shops and maybe ask for work? What do you think? Look at all the shops up on top of the bridge. So maybe he might go into one of those. What he did was this. He went to the top of the hump of the bridge and he stood and he waited. And nothing happened. For a whole day he waited. And nothing happened. He spent a night sleeping on the embankment under the bridge. And nothing happened. The next morning he went back up onto the bridge and sat on a doorstep. And still nothing happened. He was hungry and he was cold and he started thinking to himself. Dreams are strange things. Sometimes it's worth listening to them and sometimes it isn't. And he was just getting up to his feet and thinking he'd start the long trudge home to Swayfham when one of the shopkeepers opened the door to his shop, stepped down onto the pavement and looked at John Chapman. Now then, stranger, he said, what's the matter with you? All yesterday I saw you standing over there on the hump of the bridge doing nothing. And here you've been all morning sitting on a doorstep, shivering like a lost soul. What's going on, eh? And John Chapman said, well, you see, I had a dream. And in my dream, I heard a voice as clear as moonlight. And it said, go to London Bridge. And so I came. The, house, the shopkeeper threw back his head and bellowed with laughter. Dreams! <laughs> Stranger, listen to me. You don't want to take any notice of dreams. I'll tell you something. Last night I dreamed a ridiculous dream. I dreamed I was in a place called, um, what was it? Uh, Swayfam. And there was a little cottage half open to the weather. And I dreamed I was digging with a spade among the roots of an old russet apple tree and there was a pot crock full of gold. But do you think I'm going to cross half England in search of dream gold? Not me. Now you listen to me and take my advice. <laughs> if I was you I'd... But at that moment the shopkeeper saw that John Chapman had gone. He was running through the streets of London with his dog at his heels. He didn't stop running by day or by night until they came home to Swayfham. And he didn't waste any time there either. He fetched a spade and he set to work digging among the roots of the old russet apple tree. And sure enough, it wasn't long before the edge of his spade struck a large clay pot which cracked open and golden coins trickled down into the soil. Hundreds of them, thousands of them. And from that moment, John Chapman's peddling days were over. His tramping and trudging days were finished. He had money enough to patch the holes in his roof and mend the glass of his windows. He had money enough to eat whenever he was hungry. And all the money 
that was more than enough, and there was plenty of it. He gave to the poor, and the hungry, and the homeless. And so he lived happily to the end of his days. And when he died, a statue was carved, a beautiful statue of John Chapman and his dog. It was set in the marketplace in Swayfham, and carved into the stone at the foot of it were these words. Even dreams can turn to gold. Even dreams can turn to gold. So there is John Chapman and he was in London first where he had gone and he was under the bridge, wasn't he Gerson boys? And all the different people on the bridge, I wonder would they were they able to see him whenever he was there? There's the jugglers. And then who's this here? It looks like a farmer, doesn't it, with all the hay on it? So John was up here to begin with, up on the brow, up on the hump of the of the bridge. And he stayed the whole time there, boys and girls, didn't he? And nothing happened. And then that kind, kind shopkeeper come out to see if he was okay. And the shopkeeper let him know about the dream, didn't he? And John, he realised, didn't John realise what was happening? And he ran, where did he run? He ran the whole way along the highways and byways until he got to his little apple tree in the back garden. And there is the apple tree. And John has, there's his big spade and he has, he has dug the spade into the ground and he hit the pot and there's all the gold falling out, Gerson boys. But wasn't he a very, very kind man, Gerson boys? He was such a kind man. He fixed, what did he fix first in his house, Gerson boys? He fixed his roof, didn't he? That's right, well done. And what else did he fix? He fixed his windows. And then, when he'd done that, Gerson boys, and he was so happy, what did he then do with his money? He gave it to the poor and the homeless and the hungry. He shared Gerson boys. I wonder, I wonder, do you think maybe that he took some of the gold back and gave it to the shopkeeper that helped him? Because it was his dream really that helped him. I wonder, did he take any back to him? Would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Would have been a good idea to come back some. So that was John Chapman and he found the gold, Gerson boys. But the best thing he did was helping others, wasn't it? And he was so happy because he was so, so happy to help others because he gave, he gave so much of it away that they then made a statue to remember him by. Because it's always remember, uh, nice to remember whenever somebody's kind to you, isn't it, Gerton boys? And John certainly was kind today, Gerton boys. He was a very, very kind man. And he remembered that even dreams can turn to gold. So that was a great dream that he had because if he hadn't had the, the dream to begin with, then he wouldn't have gone to London. And he wouldn't have then met the shopkeeper that then told him about his dream. So sometimes it's good to listen to dreams and sometimes it's not good to listen to dreams, isn't that right? So I hope you enjoyed today's story, girls and boys, and it was called Tales of Wisdom and Wonder. And our story was called The Peddler of Swayfam. So girls and boys are little legends. I hope to see you again soon for another story soon. But in the meantime, it's bye from our little legend story time. Bye for now girls and boys and we hope to see you again soon.